Call the council the meeting to order. Please be seated. Motion to adopt the minutes of the open council meeting held on May the 1st, 2017. All right, um, the first item of business is proclamations, uh, Cycling for Diversity Week. Councillor Johnson, please. Your Worship uh, of the Office of the Mayor, City of Burnaby, proclamation regarding Cycling for Diversity Week. Whereas cultural diversity is an important aspect of a healthy cooperative community, and whereas May 21st, 2017 has been recognized by the United Nations as World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development, and whereas... Wait for that. Sorry. Whereas the City of Burnaby recognizes the value of cultural diversity and wishes to promote awareness of diversity within our community, therefore now yourself, Mayor Derek Corrigan, does hereby proclaim May 21st to 27th as Cycling Diversity Week in the City of Burnaby. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. I'm sorry for that interruption. Is that uh, the clerk says there's ghosts in the machine? <laughs> All right, uh, the next proclamation is Local Government Awareness Week. Councillor Jordan, please. Thank you, Worship. Uh, from the Office of the Mayor, Local Government Awareness Week. Whereas Local Government Awareness Week is an annual Union of British Columbia Municipalities initiative to educate the public about the roles and responsibilities of local government and to encourage public participation in local government processes, and whereas community understanding of local government operations and the services it provides is of primary importance to meaningful participation at the local level, and whereas Burnaby is a community that celebrates its long history of community engagement and participation in local government, now therefore Derek R. Corrigan, the Mayor of Burnaby, does hereby proclaim May 21st to 27th 2017 as Local Government Awareness Week in the City of Burnaby. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. And National Missing Children's Month and Missing Children's Day, Councillor Wang. Thanks, Your Worship. National Missing Children's Month and Missing Children's Day. Whereas a Child Fund of British Columbia, a provincial member of a Child Fund of Canada, is a non-profit registered charitable organization incorporated in 1984, and uh, whereas uh, the mandate of Child Fund British Columbia is to educate children and adults about adoption prevention for to promote awareness of the problem of missing children and to assist in the location of missing children. And uh, whereas Child Fund has recognized green as a color of hope, which is symbolized a light in the darkness for all missing children. And uh, whereas Child Fund's annual Green Ribbon of Hope campaign will be held in the months of May and uh, May 25th is National Missing Children's Day. Now therefore, Derek Corrigan, Mayor of Burnaby, does hereby proclaim May as National Missing Children's Month and May 25th is Missing Children's Day in the city of Burnaby. The mayor urges our citizens to wear a green ribbon as a symbol of hope for the recovery for, of all missing children and to remind vigilant in our common desert to protect and uh, nurture the use of our province. This uh, is a provocation. Thank you very much, Councillor Wang. I, uh, before I move on to the presentations, I just wanted to uh, congratulate Councillor Kang on being elected as MLA for Burnaby Deer Lake. Congratulations. I also wanted to congratulate uh, school trustee uh, Katrina Chen for being elected the MLA for Burnaby Low Heat. Uh, Janet Rutledge is the brand new um, MLA 
for Burnaby North, and Raj Shohan was re-elected as the MLA for Burnaby Edmonds. I want to uh, also particularly thank um, all of the candidates who ran for election, but uh, I think standing out from all of them is, uh, is Richard Lee, the former MLA for Burnaby North, who served uh, Burnaby for, I believe, uh, 16 years. 16 years he served uh, the city of Burnaby, and he deserves all of our appreciation for the, uh, the great work that he did over that time. And uh, anybody who takes up public service for that extended period of time uh, deserves our congratulations. And I'll be writing to him on behalf of Council to thank him for his service. And we'll be congratulating the re-elected MLA and the brand new MLAs and uh, encouraging them uh, to be sure to represent Burnaby's interests in Victoria. I also wanted to mention that uh, Councillor Wang very late on took on running uh, in the seat of Vancouver Langara, did a tremendous job in a very short period of time. It was a, a very tight contest there. And uh, Councillor Wang, thank you for taking up the, the opportunity. Much appreciated. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen with the government now. Is that uh, if anybody, yeah, if anybody was hoping that I'd have more information, uh, uh I have no idea what's going to happen. It, I think all of us are watching with bated breath the results of the absentee ballots and seeing what, if anything, changes as a result of those. We look forward to uh, finding out over the next couple of weeks exactly what form of government we will be dealing with, but. I wanted to take this chance to uh, congratulate those who are newly elected, those who have served in the past, and those who are re-elected here in the city of Burnaby. So with that, I'll move on to the next item of business I've got, which is presentations. Okay, now. So as you heard, local, uh, local Government Awareness Week is May the 21st to the 27th, 2017. It's an annual Union of BC Municipalities initiative held in May to encourage public participation in local government. The theme for Burnaby's Local Government Awareness Week 2017 is celebrating and connecting Burnaby. It promotes local government awareness and opportunities to be engaged in civic life. As 2017 marks Burnaby's 125th birthday, the week has been coordinated to highlight birthday celebrations. And I was here for the 100th birthday. I was a counselor when we had our 100th birthday. I think, were you here with me? No? You were a Parks Commissioner. I guess I was the only one here for the 100th birthday. Shows you how old I am. It wasn't my 100th birthday. To help us honor both special events, we hosted a drawing contest and asked grade five, six, and seven students to tell us what they love about their city. We asked them to let their imaginations run wild and to create a masterpiece that showcases Burnaby. We were amazed with the quality of art that was submitted for this contest. We had almost 100 student submissions from throughout the city. Our judges had the tough job of choosing only four winners. It's clear that there is a lot of talent and creativity in our schools. The judging team included City of Burnaby staff, a social planner, a community arts programmer, a communications expert, my assistants, and of course me. We judged everyone's work on how well it related to the theme, the level of creativity, and the overall quality. These four girls in front of me exceeded all my expectations. Their work really stood out. And best of all, their art put a smile on my face and reminded me of everything that I too love about the city of Burnaby. I am very pleased to recognize each of them individually and their work in front of their families, city council, and our staff this evening. To further celebrate their hard work and artistic skills, 
I have some prizes for each of them. Their art will also be mentioned in the summer issue of Info Burnaby and on the City of Burnaby's website and social media. So, the winners are here, and I'm going to go through them in alphabetical order. So, the first student is a grade six student from Suncrest, Ella Go, and hers is a logo redesign with people and words. So Ella, come on up here. Come on. Here we go. Now, this is Ella's beautiful artwork. Isn't that something? Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Wow. What a beautiful piece of art. You're a very talented young lady. Thank you very much for your creativity, Ella. It's just beautiful. Does Ella get to keep this? Wow, you get to keep this? Framed from the city of Burnaby. Well, come on in and get a picture with me. Here we go. And I've got this prize for you, Ella. There you go. Wow, look at that. I can't believe all this stuff in there. <laughs> Did we really give her all that stuff? Let me look here. I think they gave you everything I had. Oh, there's a pack sack, water bottle. Oh my gosh, you're gonna have so much fun looking through that. Pardon? Oh, do I got, have I got an envelope for it too? I bet that has a certificate in it for you. Let me look. Oh, no, there we go. It's another copy of it. That's the original. There we go. Pardon? Oh, okay. The original is in the frame? Oh, okay. I'll give you this one, too. Okay. Again, congratulations, Ella. Wonderful job. Suncrest, right down the street from me. Do I get to give Ella this? Yes, cool. There you go, Ella. Oh, you got so much stuff. Okay, and next I've got a grade five student from Sperling, Margaret Cutts. And this is a carousel with pond and poles. Come on up here, Margaret. Where are you? There you are. Now, look at this. Is that ever nice? Wow. What an artist. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? I'm so impressed. That is so nice. Come on over and get a picture taken with me. So you were inspired by your city, is that right? Yes. yes, that's right. Okay, now you've already seen the drill. I've got all these presents for you. Do you have someone to carry all your stuff for you? And I've got Margaret's artwork here. There you go. All your stuff. Congratulations, Margaret. <laughs> Wonderful job. Okay, now... I've got Grace Liu. She's a grade seven student from Taylor Park School. And hers is about uh, diversity and people in our community. Grace, where are you? There you are, Grace, come on up. Oh, look at this. This is all about people. All about people in our community. Isn't that cute? Look at that. You are so talented. What a good job. Come on, let's get a picture together. Let's see who smiles bigger. Okay, and here's your present for you, Grace. There you go. 
and you've got your other piece of artwork there. Congratulations. Okay. And last but not least, we have a grade seven student, again from Suncrest. Boy, they've got a lot of artists at Suncrest. This is multiple uh, scenes, and this is J.E. Zheng. Come on up. Oh, look at this. Isn't that nice? Here we go. These guys may have to hire them on for graphics at the city. Well, that is so beautiful. Come on in here and get a picture taken with me. Beautiful, Jay. That's so beautiful. And you were inspired by your city, too. Yeah. And you're from Suncrest School? You're only just down the street from me. My kids went to Nelson, but don't hold that against me, okay? <laughs> and here, I've got presents for you, too. There we go. And you can take those back, and you can give those to your family. And then all of you young ladies, come on up here and get your picture taken together. I want all my artists up here with me. Come on. Come in here. Two on each side. There we go. Come on in. There we go. Way to go, girls. Have a seat. <laughs> we <laughs> we um, today we have the assistant director of parks, recreation, and cultural <laughs> services in charge of arts and culture in our city. I, uh, I like to have him here tonight to be able to see that the arts are alive and well in the city of Burnaby, and young artists are inspired by our city. You know, I always, uh, I always like to say when we have these kind of opportunities that it really is great to have kids in our community who are so talented, so capable, who are doing such beautiful things with their life. And I want to give credit to all the mums and dads who encourage these young people to exercise their creativity. You know, this starts at home. It starts from families who value art, who value culture, who want their children to become creative, because those young creative people will dictate our future. Those are the people who will find creative solutions to the problems that we have and allowing them to develop this talent to explore their capacity to do things that will push the edges are really what uh, is going to help us improve the world. In fact, it may save the world eventually. So I, I want to thank all of the parents who do so much to make such great little kids and to ensure that they have the, the ability to go out there and test their creative bounds. So big hand for the parents, eh? So with that, I want to uh, thank you for participating in our contest is that uh, we will be using your art to show everybody about the talent in our city over the next little while. But again, it's been uh, absolutely wonderful to have you here with us tonight. You are welcome to stay for the rest of the council meeting if you would like to. But I know that there's probably some of you who are going to want to get home and do your homework. And uh, for some, it might even be close to bedtime. So. With that, again, thank you very much, and thank you for coming tonight.
Now, um, thanks again. Tonight our uh, delegation was unable to attend, as uh, you all know Vic Blankard. Um, he's ill and couldn't be with us, but Mr. Blankard uh, had sent off a note and had uh, told me that he was concerned about the construction near Highland Drive and the surrounding area, the trucks and cars um, parking there and, and left all day. Um, he wanted to ask about the possibility of resident parking only. And if there are parking problems in that area, I hope staff will uh, investigate that and ensure that we are looking after the opportunities for visitors and residents in that community to be able to park close to their homes. He's also concerned about losing the uh, homeowner grant, and that's happened to so many people in our community. And his recommendation was that seniors should be exempt, no matter how high their price is, that seniors should continue to be able to receive their homeowner's grant. And that's an issue that, uh, you know, we've been raising on an ongoing basis. Yeah, unfortunately. But it's an issue, and I, I will pass that on to you, uh, Councillor Johnson, on your committee. I know you're continually working on this issue of homeowner grants and assessments, but uh, Mr. Blankard should know that we're considering that. And Mr. Blankard was also concerned with garbage pickup. Now that it's every two weeks, he was worried that uh, we're cutting services and we're collecting more money. Um, I will write to Mr. Blankard and explain to him that we are actually reinvesting all of that money into making Burnaby even cleaner. We're using the opportunity to pick up garbage that's left in our community. We're using it as an opportunity to increase service. You'll see that a lot of our bus stops are now getting the uh, multi-material bins to be able to have those picked up. We need workers available to us, and those workers are reassigned to be able to do that cleanup. I'm hoping that by bi-weekly collection of our garbage, we are going to save resources and we have the ability to reassign those resources to make Burnaby even better. And uh, I can assure Mr. Blankard, and I will by letter, that we are looking at how those resources are going to improve our city and will continue to do so. So I'll respond to the issues that Mr. Blankard uh, left for us, but he may seek an opportunity to come in and express his opinions far better than I can at some date in the future. All right, with that, a motion to resolve into a committee of the whole to consider reports. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. First report is Financial Management Committee, Councillor Johnson. So this is regarding the 2017 Environmental Award Program. I would move that Council receive the report for information purposes. Second. Your Worship, uh, the report that's before us sets out the winners of the 2017 Environmental Awards and Environmental Stars. Uh, I won't read them all tonight. There will be a presentation uh, at Council on May 29th, uh, whereby uh, the, the award winners will be encouraged to come forward and uh, make the we made presentation in this venue. Thank you, Councillor Johnson, and thank you to uh, all of the work that went in to select these, uh, these winners. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. Public Safety uh, Committee, Councillor Calendino, please. Thank you, Your Worship, and this is uh, safety countermeasures kind of the way at Rayside Street, and the recommendations are that Council approve the implementation of several road improvements to mitigate safety concerns along Canada Way at Rayside Street as detailed in this report and that a copy of this report be sent to Mr. Brad Jones, number 803 11 to 11 85 Street, Edmonton, Alberta. Thank you, <laughs> We've been seconded. <laughs> Your Worship. Uh, this uh, report uh, stem, stemmed from a discussion we had at this table near the end of March after there had been a, a fatal accident in that uh, area there. And at that meeting, I was asked to bring it to the uh, Public Safety Committee. And at that committee, we asked staff to look into the issues of safety on uh, kind of the way between Rayside and Hazard Street and report back to the committee, which they did. 
And we also asked staff to look into the possibility of implementing photo radar, and they responded to that as well. And uh, the staff obviously uh, um, did uh, a road safety review for that location and then came back with the recommendations that we have. And the recommendations will be uh, read in a moment, uh, Your Worship. But I uh, wish Council to take note that ICBC crash data shows that 20, there were 20 reported crashes at this location, kind of the way race out intersection, within the last three years. And of these 11 were property damage only crashes, but nine were more serious uh, with injury or fatal crashes. The uh, uh, staff had taken several preventive measures in the past, but none of them, none of them proved really effective because this area seems to have turned into a speedway and most of the accidents were due to speed in this area. Um, staff is willing to try more aggressive measures that we will see below. And uh, the RCMP is also being uh, quite a bit more aggressive in, with traffic viola violations in, the, in this particular spot. And uh, they have been very active there, and they issued 371 traffic violations at uh, this particular area on Canada Way. And a majority of them were related to speeding, which has been the cause of many accidents. As for the recommended countermeasures, Your Worship, uh, staff, engineer staff in particular, recommends that A, we install a curve warning ahead sign for westbound motorists. That uh, install a new and improved speed reader board with several features. Uh, we install reflective delineator posts along the center line of Canada Way and raised pavement markers along the white dashes line for the length of the curve uh, to further highlight the curvature. And this delineator posts also help to reinforce the restricted access to Rayside Street. Uh, and for those who don't know what the uh, delineator, uh, reflective delineator posts. It's the same post that they have uh, installed on uh, Patula Bridge, which has proved rather effective for the last few years, has prevented uh, accidents uh, on the Patula. Hopefully, we'll have the same effect on this specific spot of Canada Way. Uh, staff also recommends that they install reflective markers along the face of the existing barriers along the north side of the road for improved visibility and restored barriers at the northwest corner of the intersection to protect against crash with hydropole, and install a breakaway support system at the base of the two existing street light posts on the north side of Canada Way. And of course, we'll have asked uh, the RCMP to continue with speed enforcement. Now, the committee pointed out to staff that uh, there need to be close monitoring to see that these measures will be effective in preventing uh, road accidents at that location, then that uh, we don't see uh, sufficient improvement that we will ask them to report back and we will look at more aggressive measures to begin with, uh, including perhaps uh, dividing a solid barrier in the middle of the, of the road. Uh, as for photo radar, uh, staff reports that uh, photo radar is used in four other provinces, such as Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Quebec, but there is no appetite with the provincial government here to permit the installation of photo radar even at crash-prone locations. So uh, that has been uh, shelved for the moment. And finally, Your Worship, the cost of these improvements will be about $90,000, and staff is planning to implement all of them this year. Thank you. Councillor Jordan. Uh, thank you, Worship. I uh, thank the committee for getting this report back to Council so quickly. and. And I certainly support all of the recommended count countermeasures that are included uh, for in this report to try and, and slow people down and, and get their attention on that corner. And this is um, good to have this information and I hope we can proceed with um, taking these measures as soon as possible. And I also <laughs> wanted to thank the committee for uh, having the discussion about photo radar, and again, like a lot of things right now, we're <laughs> kind of in a holding pattern about provincial government decisions, but um, perhaps we can, in the next few weeks, see what happens, and we can ask the 
uh, UBCM if there is a change in government to bring forward the, I think, already policy that uh, of asking for uh, voter radar in particular high crash locations, which the previous government <laughs> was not willing to was not willing to do. So, so we'll just hold on to that for a few more weeks and see. <laughs> and ask Mr. Weaver what his opinion is. <laughs> uh, that's all, Your Worship. Thank you. But I do appreciate the committee dealing with this um, so quickly. It's good work. Um, Councillor Daliwa. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I believe Councillor Calendina has covered very extensively this report. The fair amount of discussion did take place at the committee level, Your Worship. Um, one of the things that doesn't come through this one year in this comes through this report is this uh, the stretch of uh, Canada Way is, is pretty notorious for for speeding. It has been we have taken many measures to slow drivers down for many many years. We have tried different things and drivers continue to speed. Uh, evidence is here in this report it says just since March to this publishing of this report. The RCMP was out there more frequently and issued 236 tickets. And, and that's not, they weren't there all the time, obviously. This is just going certain times and you can get this. And it seems to be um, uh, obviously helping, but certainly not seem to be deterred. New people, same people keep getting caught. A lot of speeding goes on. And, and I, I keep thinking that this is because from Patello Bridge, this seems to be the best way for people to get to town because they take Patello, McBride, 10th Avenue, Canada Way, and off they get to the highway. They're trying to beat around Burnaby Lake and, and get on there. That's perhaps their best way. As long as the traffic continues from Surrey uh, and we have a four-lane arterial road versus uh, another one, it, it, it seems like the, the shortcut will continue, Your Worship. I think in the longer run, hopefully in our transportation plan, we take a really serious look at it in the longer run, what we are going to do to divert traffic away from what, what is a, a practically a, a, a residential street. This is not a highway. We already have four major highways through the city, or major routes, I should say. You have the Low Hill, you have the Barnett, you have Marine Drive, you have uh, uh, Highway 1, but they'll continue to come. So I think the Transportation Committee has a task when we sit down to really take a look at it, how we divert traffic away from our residential city. This has got to be one priority for us, Your Worship. Um, I can't think of any, any immediate way to do it, but but certainly some way to slow the traffic down, perhaps more lights, pedestrian crossing, which is needed. Uh, there's bus traffic on both sides, and we know how difficult it is for people to just cross from one side to the other because there's so much traffic on the street. They can't seem to adequately take advantage of the bus service because you have to walk almost 500, 500 meters to get to the bus because the lights are not frequent enough there. I think we need to take a second look at it very closely. This was a very quick response, very quickly, and we certainly appreciate what the staff has done because this should make some difference. I also want to quickly say about photo radar. I think, I think this wasn't what I was expecting. I was hoping that perhaps we would have a little bit more than just saying, well, the province doesn't not going to allow it, and I understand that. That's nothing new that they will not allow it, but but we got to trying to commit some way differently. We have photo radar in, in our intersections, which is red light cameras. They're stationary. This is not a, a sort of a go and, and catch them innocently, move photo radar. If this photo radar is at a certain, certain place, location specific all the time, I think would definitely be a, 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 a deterrent. And we can afford to have the RCMP sitting there all the time trying to give them tickets. So we need to do something about it. If this doesn't change, I believe this challenge will continue for us, Your Worship. It's been frustrating for a long time in regard to Canada Way and the uh, and the problems in uh, in dealing with high speed on Canada Way, and we've lost uh, too many young people over decades uh, along that stretch of roadway in in Burnaby. 
it was traditionally a highway. It was a way in which people were moving through Burnaby um, prior to the uh, Highway 1. And uh, it, that's why it was called Canada Way. And uh, it still is a major thoroughfare, and you're right. It connects uh, many people that are moving from the Fraser Valley through New Westminster and into Burnaby looking for a shortcut. But it's often our young people that are the ones who are killed on that street. And I, I know that uh, staff have been going through all of their available means to try to find a solution. And I see with this report, another $90,000 uh, improvement in, in areas that we've got, attempting to find solutions. Um, you know, really, I guess there's very limited ability to do anything about this except to do everything you can to slow traffic down by obstructing traffic, you know, congesting traffic, which is probably the only solution is uh, having lights that will uh, cause traffic to be jammed up. But that won't make people happy, particularly those people who are using it as a commuter route to be able to get through our city. So I will uh, continue to support the recommendations that come from our Public Safety Committee, but it's a, it's a difficult problem, and, uh, and it's one that no council has been able to solve over a number of years. Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I um, uh, quite, quite impressed to see the report today. I will say, though, one, one thing that I think is needed is a narrowing of the in and out off of Canada, off of Canada Way into Rayside, because when we put, we did put a, a, a triangle in there to make it right in right out only but it's wide enough that trucks and, and and cars are still able to make a left turn around it and you see one at least a week I, uh, last Monday night on my way home I saw a BC hydro truck come charging out of there uh, to make a left hand turn so I mean it happens and I think that the narrower that interest that in and out can be the the, the less likely were to to have that happen the um, the recommendation regarding photo radar, I understand that there's support for it, but I do, uh, I do think that if we can find another way to uh, reduce the speed of traffic, I think it's better than a, than a, um, a, a, a ticket system that uh, is questionable with a lot of people. I, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think that any government, whoever you are, makes makes a lot of friends. Uh, with uh, introduction of things like photo radar, yes, it does slow traffic down, but a lot of uh, questionable tickets get handed out in questionable situations, and there's no ability to uh, to challenge that. I uh, would rather see us narrow the street or put additional lights in or whatever to to reduce the speed or, or educate the public to drive slower rather than than put an arbitrary uh, thing which. As far as I'm concerned, the, uh, we, we, we would introduce photo radar into that intersection and uh, the provincial government would be the one making the fine revenue and we'd be the one uh, blamed for any uh, issues relating to that. So I'd be very cautious on that one. I think we all should be very cautious about that because I don't think anybody wants to see photo radar become a cash cow for the provincial government. But on the other hand, I think Several of the councillors are looking at a limited use of photo radar in those situations where there are high fatality rates, high crash rates that uh, are not controllable by other means. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I guess there's a compromise. The problem is that in trusting other orders of government to exercise uh, appropriate discretion as to how they allocate photo radar and how limited the use is, is that we often end up with them in a situation where they see the benefits of photo radar and then it increases, you know, and is in other locations. So it's trying to find a set of rules that would say photo radar would only be applicable where there is a significant and dire need to be able to restrict traffic speed. And, uh, and I guess that's a question that really we have to continue to ask. Is there a way to utilize photo radar and uh, and to do so without making it simply uh, a 
a cash cow where they are, are looking to pick up every driver who comes down. Putting photo, photo radar in a place like, for instance, Royal Oak Hill would, uh, would mean that everybody got a ticket going down Royal Oak Hill. So you got to watch out for that, and I, I can understand it. Councillor Calendino. I just want to comment on the photo radar issue. Obviously, uh, other provinces in BC are you, in uh, Canada are using it, and I've been to a few countries outside of Canada, and most other countries on the highways have photo radar, but it's not the photo radar that we had in BC 20 years ago, which needed a van and needed a machine, which needed to be calibrated, otherwise you'd be challenged in court. No, they just post on the side of the highways um, a few hundred meters apart, and those two posts, when you get by, measure your speed. And it seems to be accepted. There seems to be no complaints about those. And it's just about in every other country outside of Canada. Europeans are much more compliant than North Americans. <laughs> so they don't like the tickets, and they go faster than we do. <laughs> but the highways also have the warning that the highway is monitored by photo radar. So people tend to pay attention because every two kilometers you have the sign overhead monitored by uh, electronic <coughs> methods. And we kind of diverted is that your committee did a good job with the tools they had yeah. in trying to find additional solutions. So some things are out of our control and photo radar is one of those. And uh, But with the tools we had, I think your committee's done a good job. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed and carried. Moving on to the city manager's report, item one. This is uh, an annual South Burnaby Community Open House street party event, and this is approval for a road closure. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And this is road closures for special events in Deer Lake Park, and this is council approval for those road closures. Ready for the question? All those in favor? Opposed, carry. And appointment of our Treasurer Financial Officer. And uh, Noreen Kassam has got her name in a report already. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. Signing officers for the bank. This is to change the signing officers. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carry. Building permit tabulation report number four, April 1 to April 30th. Been moved. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Last item, uh, contract award for tires and related services. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Motion of the committee rise and report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. A motion the report of the committee be adopted. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Councillor Johnson, if you would please read the bylaws. Okay, for first reading, I would move that bylaws 13751, 13752, 13753, 13754, and 13755 be now introduced and read a first time. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. For first, second, and third reading, I would move that bylaws 13757, 13758, 13759, 13760, 13761, 13762, and 13763 be now introduced and read three times. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. For consideration in third reading, it has come to the attention of Council that the architect identified in bylaw number 13586 is incorrect. The correct architect is Cornerstone Architecture Incorporated. And I would move that, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm moving it, right? I would move that. Burnaby zoning by law 1965 amendment by law number 19 2016 rezoning 15-37 by law number 13586 be amended to identify Cornerstone Architecture Incorporated as the project architect and all references to Robert Kizozi Architecture Inc. being replaced by Cornerstone Architecture Incorporated. 
And I would move that uh, bylaws number 13463, 13586, 13625 be now considered and read a third time. All right, Definitely. so here's how we're going to do it. In regard to the proposed amendment, I'd like a seconder to the motion made by Councillor Johnson. Right. It moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. And uh, now uh, 13463, 13586, 13625 be now considered read a third time. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And for reconsideration and final adoption, I would move that bylaws 13750, 13756 be now reconsidered, finally adopted, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the corporate seal affixed there too. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. All right, new business. I wanted to mention something to council tonight. I think. Um, probably some of you may be aware is the report of the modernization panel uh, came out uh, today in regard to the NEB. I, I understand the, the key recommendation was abolishing the, the National Energy Board, which we've been telling them for a long time that they should do. Um, as our council said, we may go down in in uh, history as the last victim of the NEB. Um, because for some reason, though everybody agrees that the NEB process was fatally flawed, that the board was biased, that it was an impossible process for citizens to be able to meaningfully participate in, is that we continue to have a decision that was made by that board thrust upon the city of Burnaby and the people of British Columbia. Uh, it is perturbing to say the very least. But what's one of the interesting things out of this was that the modernization panel, uh, and I'm going to ask staff a little later, ask for a motion from you to ask staff to report back on the modernization panel. But I just wanted to, to show you what's happening in our, in our government and with our prime minister. The modernization uh, panel, one of their key recommendations was that there needs to be more transparency in the process and particularly in regard to the cabinet deliberations as to exactly what the cabinet is considering when they deliberate on the results of one of these applications. The response from the federal government was to issue a section 39 certificate asserting cabinet confidentiality over the entire ministerial recommendation and the attachments that went before cabinet. So you've got the modernization panel saying a key recommendation is more transparency in regard to the cabinet's deliberations and the first action of government is to do exactly the opposite and that is to use a certificate to put confidentiality over anything that they discussed or any of the material that they received. And it is impossible to challenge. There is no court challenge available because once the government exercised this authority to protect their confidentiality, there's no access. So here you go. Uh, the government appoints its own panel. Its own panel says we should find out what cabinet considered. And the first thing they do has set a confidentiality restriction on what they consider. They'll figure. You know, I just thought I'd point that out because I am always astounded by the irony in relation to how our federal government operates. And uh, here we've got a case where the federal government, in fact, the prime minister himself said that the process was fundamentally flawed, that you couldn't trust the National Energy Board in regard to decisions that someone had to do something about them. He then approved the recommendation that was given by the National Energy Board, brought out a panel that was going to modernize the board who recommend getting rid of the National Energy Board. And at the end of the day say, and we also want to find out what you were talking about in cabinet and making these decisions. The first reaction is to put a confidentiality order so that we can never know what was discussed in cabinet. 
I think it's important for Canadians to know that and to be aware of the way in which their government is behaving, even in the face of recommendations that come directly from their own panel. So has anybody got anything more interesting than that to talk about? Councillor Daliwa. Thank you, Your Worship. Now that you raised the subject, I just wanted to chime in with a couple of things. First of all, I, um, I, I wanted to uh, congratulate City of Burnaby staff because we had a great input into the, the, the recommendation, which went through FCM, by the way, to make a presentation to the panel about the reform to NEB. All of City of Burnaby's recommendation was part of that, and, and that presentation was submitted, obviously, to the, um, to the panel. Um, I personally think this is a, this is a good thing. This, be, this is a rebuke to the, cabinet, to, the, to the federal government that the circumstances and that led them to approve Kinder Morgan pipeline were, as you say, were, were dubious to say the least, and perhaps even known that the process was flawed. So I think this strengthened the case for, for Slavatooth and others and ours to say, look, judicial review is warranted. First of all, the people who approved under these, here's a proof of that, why people coast to coast, local municipalities who stood by FCM and other made other presentation, that there was no transparency, there was no public F hearing of this one, there was no cross-examination, all those things, I believe, your worship, are you now good, strong evidence you would know from your your profession that I think, even lay person like me can think that, the decision they made really should be thrown out. And I think that would be taken into consideration when the judicial review is taken, uh, because here's the proof that, you know, they're abandoning, which was the, 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 the sort of the central piece of the whole how this is approved, because they could override everything, and turned out to be it really wasn't serving the purpose. Apparently, um, the federal government doesn't think it's anything that a selfie can't cure. So, the courts might have a different view, Your Worship. One of the disappointing areas where you can get away during elections saying almost anything, making people believe that you're going to represent their interests, young people get out and vote in droves in order to have someone elected who will represent those interests for them. And then the <laughs> disappointment is what alienates people from the political process and drives the participation of young people down. You know, if, uh, if politicians feel with impunity, they can go in and tell whatever story they want and then never follow through on what they promised and get away with it. And we continue to see uh, a world of politicians who, uh, who fail to tell the truth. And, uh, and somehow it doesn't seem to be punishable. And eventually you end up with a result like we've seen in our neighbor, you know, where, where the best liar wins. And uh, that's not what I got into government for. It's not what any of my colleagues got into government for. And it certainly is not what I respect in government officials. And uh, this is just another one of those slaps in the face where you have your own panel come back and tell you, come on, be transparent about what you're discussing. Say, nah, forget about it. I've got this power to be able to make it all confidential. And I will. So anyway. With that, I uh, yeah, for staff to report on the results of the modernization panel, or I could make you read the whole report yourself. <laughs> nah, I think we go with staff. <laughs> you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. All right, with that, uh, is there anything else? A motion to adjourn is in order. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you, staff, and thank you to everyone who is with us tonight.